Hey everybody, hope you're all well. Welcome to Eagle Trade, brought to you by the Let's Talk Crypto podcast and proudly sponsored by CryptoFish.com. I've got it up behind me right now. CryptoFish.com is an easy-to-use, non-custodial platform to buy, exchange, store, earn, or send Bitcoins using Euro, US dollars, or your local currency with debit, credit card, internationally, ACH, SEPA, UK bank transfer, wires coming soon, so is Poly for Australia, and Ideal Payments for the Netherlands. We also have an absolutely free learning section, Bitcoin, Crypto, Blockchain 101, the Cryptopedia section, and an absolutely free video learning portal, plus our crypto podcast. Right, let's jump into the price. I have a sea of green behind me right now. It was a sea of red early this morning. But now, thankfully, it's a sea of green. And uh, Bitcoin's currently trading at 9,744, 1.86% up. Ethereum is $244 up, 2.31% up. And you can see the rest of the currencies as they sit behind me right now. And uh, the Bitcoin dominance is sitting at 65.09%. Hasn't really moved too much, um, but that's all right. Bitcoin has moved up a couple hundred dollars. We did see a low, I think, today of about uh, 9,400 and some change. But we'll check that when we get to the charts. Let's have a look at the fear and greed index. Fear and greed is now ticking at a 54. Still in the neutral zone, however, on the positive side. uh, We've gone from fear, fear, neutral, neutral now. And it looks like maybe sentiment is picking up a little bit. Last time that sentiment did pick up, if you look back at this chart in the history over here, when we got to a 56, we had that major dump. So it will be interesting to see what happens if this carries on ticking up. Why is this chart useful? When it ticks down on a low reading, we tend to get a counter uh, movement in price. So uh, if there's too much fear, we get a pump in price. And if there's too much greed, we get a dump. Not all the time. It's just to add confluence to our other indicators that we use. And it just gives general uh, market sentiment. It does use a host of different um, inputs, some of them being technical analysis, I think and the rest being um, basically fundamental. It's basically a fundamental tool just to gauge what the sentiment of the market is. The theory is that if the market's too exuberant, we, we're probably uh, topping out, and if the market is too pessimistic, then the market's probably gonna run the other way and go up and liquidate all the shorts, and conversely, if it's the other way around, it's gonna liquidate all the longs. Interesting to watch, and sometimes can add value to um, to what you're looking at, especially if you add an area of resistance and the market's too exuberant. Uh, perhaps uh, we're going to have a pullback, or if we're in an area of support, perhaps the market's too um, too pessimistic, and perhaps we're going to have a bounce. Even if it's a dead cat bounce, maybe it's a counter, it's a counter move in price. Right, let's jump into the charts. What do I have up here? I've got the four-hour chart. Let's move straight into the weekly. If my computer will catch up with me. There we go. Okay, I've removed all my drawing tools. I do have the EMAs on. I want to point this out uh, before we actually dive deeper. We are living very healthily above all our EMAs and SMAs, all the ones that I like, all the ones that I count. And um, for that reason, I cannot really be bearish on this. Although we have hit this order block over here, and I'll throw on the draw- drawing tools again, this order block over here around about the 10,200 to 10,500 uh, area. We've been uh, sort of tapping into it. And this one here, we made it all the way up to 10,429 on Bitstamp, just for your own exchange. Um, We have been sent down again. We didn't have that drop all the way down to about 9,100 on uh, most exchanges. BitMEX got all the way down to 8,600, 8,700 area. That's a bit extreme, but BitMEX is known because of its liquidation engine of, of sort of pushing the limits and going a little bit further than the other exchanges. That's fine. I don't use BitMEX. If you do, that's good for you. This is not investment advice, not trading advice. Please do not trade or make in any investments based on anything I say here, and you probably shouldn't do that for any other YouTuber either. Right, so what am I looking at here? Let's remove these drawing tools. We're above all the EMAs, and we're about to get a healthy cross of the 10 SMA, across the 21 uh, EMA. Uh, and I think within the next few weeks, if we carry on living above the 21 EMA at, at the very minimum, these um, moving averages will start to splay out. And you can actually see that effect here on daily. You'll see that the moving averages, are all the lower periods are, are trading above the, the, the higher periods, and they're all starting to splay out. And Realistically, if you look at the daily, it's hard to really be bearish. I mean, we're living above the 10 SMA. We've been bouncing off the EMAs and the SMAs all the way up here and being held up. Yes, we did have a major dump there, but, you know, that that's basically, you know, 
order flow dynamics there where you've got the bigger players who are basically washing out all the over over, ledger, over leveraged longs um, and what I tend to find is that if we are going to make a big move to the upside this is my opinion uh, at resistance they're going to play games and they're going to shake out the over leveraged people because not everybody can fit on the bus and to be on the bus you need to have a big wallet or you need to be a smart money so What's happened here is they've shaken everybody out, and it, sometimes it takes a few, a few of these attempts before we, we head on higher. And we do have rising, rising lows here. Okay, let's throw back on my drawing tools. I'm pretty sure I've got yeah the trend line. We, we, we have got uh, higher lows, and we did have uh, lower highs, but right now we do have a higher high on the daily. So that, that that's a good sign, and the whole structure is intact here. If we just zoom out a little bit. The whole structure is still intact. Uh, you know, as long as the uptrend is, is continues on most time frames, uh, it's really hard for me to be bearish. I am leaning more to the upside here. Even if we did have another shakeout back down towards the sort of low low nine thousands and even upper or well, low nine thousands and even the upper eight thousands, uh, as long as on a closing basis we still end up above about eight uh, eight seven eight eight and preferably above nine thousand. Uh, and above the wick low here, uh, I think that we've still got more upside to go, and we're going to rechallenge the 10,000 to 10,200 area. Now, there are some other considerations at play here. I'd like to go back to the monthly. Let's just take a look, careful look at the monthly here. All moving averages are below price action. We closed this monthly on the end of May above the last swing high on the monthly. That for me is extremely bullish and it overrides most of my other sort of commentary on other time frames. However, because it is a monthly, it doesn't mean that we can't come back down and within a weekly, three day, two day, one day, and, and all the other time frames below, play around this 10 SMA and even come back down and test the dreaded 21 EMA on the monthly. I'm not leaning towards that happening, but it does mean that on a closing basis, uh, we could end up back up here or even higher but still come back down all the way and test lower lower supports here. I would ideally like us to hold the low of the previous month, which is at 8,109 on stamp. Uh, anything below that would seem like a bit of continuation on what seems like a sort of in-between candle here. It's not so much a doji, but it's not really, it's, it, it's not that bullish of a candle and it's not that uh, bearish of a candle either. It's sort of mm, ne nearly indecision, but because it closed above the 10 SMA, I am leaning a little bit more bullish on that side. And because very importantly, it, it closed above the swing higher, I am extremely bullish on, on the monthly time frame. Now, if we did come back on lower time frames and test around this area, but still close anywhere in the region that we are now, that would be great. Although I don't like the look of the current stance of this candle because it does look a little bit more indecision than the previous which means that uh, people are losing faith in the uptrend. But that's only on a closing basis, not closed. It doesn't mean the candle's going to close like this. So we, we sort of like, yeah, it's a bit of mental gymnastics right now. It's not really what we should be doing. So I will go back down to the weekly time frame. So back to the weekly time frame. We are living above uh, the, the close of the, the last week. We have taken out the, the, the wick. We've come all the way up to 10,400 odd and we are sort of sitting on lower time frames consolidating in this area if we can remain above the 9400 to 9300 to 9400 area if you look at that 9000 sort of 474 is our previous close on the weekly basis but i think we even have to come down here to this area over here but 9200 and 9300 area as long as we can hold that especially this this wick low here um I, I think we've still got some more upside to go let's have a look at the oscillator here still still going up still got some room to go uh, monthly oscillator uh stokes pointed up confirmed up that's great every uptick on the on the monthly basis has led to positive price action three-day time frame also looking okay look at this wick down here you could call it a test of the 21 ema it, it right now it's holding the 10 sma which i'd like to see it continue to do uh, which is at 9465 a little bit of confluence there with the weekly and you'll see that we've wicked down on the two day and touched the 10 sma it has valiantly held us up if you see here once twice will it hold us up again i think we do get a close today yes we do so let's see if we can hold this 10 sma that currently the 10 sma is sitting at 9,397. So I'd like to see us hold that, and if we don't, then perhaps we get a test back down to the 89 uh, area where it could be a buy, in my opinion. And that would also 
paint a good picture here of of, um, of rising bottoms here. If oh, I've got too much drawing tools, but you'll see it lines up nicely with the 21 uh, with the 21 EMA on the two day. Let me get rid of all this stuff here. Okay, looks a little bit too convoluted. Not only that, on the two-day RSI, you'll see that we've uh, regained the exponential. We have a chance to close here and perhaps have, you know, even a pullback down to the exponential over the next uh, two-day time frame, and then having another go at the at the bullish control zone. It's not out of out of order, and I would like to see us take out this uh, this this section of the RSI here. Uh, that would make me extremely bullish, and especially if we could enter into the bullish control zone, that would be amazing. Uh, what I don't want to see is a lower high here on RSI and us to, for, to break the RSI. I'll tell you why, because that would mean that we'd probably start fleshing out a, if that happened, and I am forecasting here, which is probably very bad, but if that did happen, we'd start painting out a bit of a descending triangle on uh, the RSI, which is a topping formation or a change in trajectory. So. We don't want to see that happen. What we want to see happen is at the, at the very most, a, a test back down to the EMA on the RSI and then upward movement after that. Otherwise, even better than that would just be continuation up from here, straight to the bullish control zone, perhaps a little bit of a pullback and back into the bullish control zone. That would be fantastic, but you don't always get what you want. Just saying what I would like. Let's have a look at the daily RSI. Daily RSI has broken the, the EMA. We are in the neutral zone overall. And... Uh, we are ticking above the RSI right now, and you know, for us to, to stay above it, I believe if we look at Bali pause indicator here, uh, oh, for it to cross down on the EMA would be 9753. We are at 9758 at the moment, so we have to keep an eye on that one. The daily, the daily time frame overall looks okay to me. I mean, we've, we're still holding above the 10 SMA. Let's have a look at the 12 hour. Oh, and before we do that, let's have a look at the daily uh, stochastic. Daily Stochastic is hinting at a cross back up here, and it is at resistance in terms of this trend line, which has been respected all the way since 29th of April. Uh, it did, it did uh, come off it, but it seems to be trying again. I would lean towards it breaking through on this next attempt. Uh, and you'll see that I've got a box down here and a trend line over there, and that was actually drawn on the 12 hour time frame, the cheat code of Bitcoin. Uh, no, it wasn't, sorry, the box was actually drawn on the daily. Anyway, what I would like to see is if uh, the 12 hour can come into this area over here, which probably be on the next tick and find support and turn back up. That to me would be extremely bullish. Looking at the 12 hour price action, we are living above the, the 21 EMA. We haven't actually broken it and we've got some beautiful wicks down here. So there is buying activity. There's definitely buying interest all the way along this 55 EMA. Let's, let's go back a little bit. Look at this. It's held the 55 EMA. Come back down here. Look at all these beautiful wicks again. It looks very reminiscent of, um, of the 8th of May. If you see here, we wicked hard down into it, wicked hard down into it. That's extremely strong buying action. Although the volume here does look a lot better, it does seem like we're doing the same thing again. Wicking down into it, buying back up, buying back up. So this does seem to be a bit of accumulation there. I hope that we get a little bit of reaccumulation and we can head on back up. I'm, I'm not as bearish as what I see on crypto Twitter. I'm actually into some uh, upward price action, a little bit more sideways and sort of upwards, and then perhaps one of those famous bar patterns back up to test resistance at 10,000 to 10,200 again, uh, where I do think that there's a strong possibility we'll break it this time, if not this time, the very next time, um, and and try and test to the 11,000 to 11,500 area. Let's go back down. Oh, wait, let's have a look at the four hour time frame, uh, 10 hour time frame, 10 hour time frame as well. Uh, hasn't actually lost the, the 21 EMA, or has it? Let's have a look on stamp. It looks like, no, it's held it, and we're living healthily above it. We are in this liquid zone over here, this little order block. Let's see if what, what we can uh, what we can achieve. We've still got five hours to go on that one. Let's have a look at a shorter time frame. I think the four hours closing in one and a half hours in my time zone here at the time of recording. And we did lose the 20, we did regain, lo regain, lose, regain and lose and it looks like we're healthily regaining it at the moment however an hour and a half to go before closing if we can close anywhere like this i i think that we will see some more upside um by mere fact that we've closed above all these emas and um smas again although we haven't broken into this pocket of resistance here i think that we could have a very quick move within the next eight hours to go and test run about the the 10,000 to 10,000, uh, 10,000, 10,050, 10,100 area. And from there, it, then the games are back on. We'll see what we're going to do from there. Uh, anything goes. I would lean to us if 
getting there and then perhaps a little bit of sideways, maybe a little fake out to the bottom, reaccumulate and then try and break through to 11,000 odd. However, if we don't do any of this, let's just quickly have a look at the stochastics. Stochastics have turned back up, heading back up again. Uh, and, I, and I think that does bode well for the immediate time frames and for the immediate price action. However, let's look at the downside. If Bitcoin fails to close above this and the bears climb in here, because you know they're on a clock right now, if this gets compressed back down and we do lose the 21 EMA, God forbid we even lose the low of this candle over here at 9,400, I do think that we're going to revisit uh, as well in quick quick succession down to the 200 uh, EMA, which is 9,100. Uh, and by, by that time, let's say within the next four to eight hours, the, this EMA should have climbed up a little bit, probably the 9,200 area. If we do manage to hold that and regain the 200 SMA, which at that time would probably be around the 9,300 area, then I would, I would remain extremely bullish for another move up. And that would just be one final shakeout, I believe, um, before a higher prices. If that doesn't hold, if we do lose the four hour uh, uh, 200 EMA, wherever that may be at the time, I do think that this trend line here is overstated as welcome and we're probably going to see much lower prices. We're probably going to test the very low 8,000s, uh, probably break the 8,006 area uh, because it's, it's been tested multiple times. Yeah? Although it's done a very good job holding, its, holding itself up, it would then confirm for me if we did come down to that area that this has been more of a distrib distribution pattern than a, a reaccumulation or a shakeout. Um, and and we'd probably uh, test a lot lower. And I would like us then to probably come down over time to the year open of 2020. And if you've been watching previous episodes, you know the, the relevancy of year opens to me. It's my, it's my strategy. Uh, I think that Bitcoin likes to come back and test your opens before it makes a massive macro change in uh, direction. And uh, this one, although we have come back to it, uh, we actually just broke right through it instead of coming back to test it. So I would like to see us come back, test it, and then off to the moon after that. Over time, obviously, I don't want to get everybody excited. But for it to not come back there, and as I said in the last episode, would also be a good thing. I would actually like to see us carry on upwards from here, uh, march onwards and upwards, and uh, actually go higher than 11,000, perhaps even break 11,500 over time and test the 16,000 area. At that point, 16,000, 20,000, it's all the same thing. I think everybody would be jumping around naked, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but let's see what happens level by level. We can watch it together. And yep, thank you for watching. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Safe trading out there. Remember, none of this is investment advice, none of this is trading advice. Please don't take any of it as any sort of monetary advice and have a great evening.